Hello, hope you're doing well. If not, as always, I hope it gets better for you. So today, we're gonna build a flush in wall, 55 gallon rack, it's gonna go sideways. And as you can see, we've got other stuff here, build other rack, but let's jump into this build. So when it comes to a 55 gallon, it's just one spread. I'm not holding multiple tanks, so I don't have to worry about the sagging so much. Pressure is going to be on the ends, and I feel safe putting it on a single. Now, anything above that is 75. I'd rather have two boards. 40, I'll do a single. But like my big racks, if you guys saw that, I did not do singles on these because I wanted the base and a solid bottom since they're so tall. But since this is not going too tall, Woodwise is very efficient. And this 55 gallon stand is going to be different than all these other stands because we've got to go into the wall here. Now we got four at 48 here and two at 44 and 5 eighths. And the reason why these aren't all the same is because the one on the bottom is going to go into this wall to this edge. So I'd cut that a little shorter and you'll see what we do here to compensate for that. But the rest of it is actually gonna go in. It's just that footing we've gotta work around. And even though we're gonna be building this in a different sequence, we can prep it like we've been doing in the other videos. Of course, if you haven't seen those videos, go to the homepage and check out our videos. We drill some holes all the way through, clean it up. Stick to the outside corners. I'm gonna get some two and a half inch deck screws. Saber drive. I like deck mate, to be honest. Just local store had that. And we prep these in. Get them as straight as possible. And we stay to the outside corners because when we screw into the side, we leave some meat for those screws that are gonna come into the side of the legs. Now those are all prepped and ready to build squares. We're gonna need some side pieces. So I've got three for the bottom and four for the top and middle at 10 inches. Now, when it comes to building these squares, get you a front and back and two sides. Pick the best side. Ooh, look at that one. Kind of like that peacock kind of look. Not that it really matters. I'm a detail guy. Well, sometimes do this. Side. So this part's a lot easier than you think. Let's go ahead and get this debris off here. Keep it tight, keep it right. Put that up there. Make sure this is even here. And yeah, make sure, I know it's harder to pick that. Ah, there we go. Make sure this is nice, plumb and all that jazz. Hold it where it needs to be. And if your measurements are right, should square itself up. Work your way around, flush and plumb. All right, now we got our square and put in the middle support. Being the longer ones, these are gonna be my my top and middle, my shorter ones at the bottom. So I'm gonna have to break this down into thirds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find out what the half mark is. So shoot, we're at 48 and three quarter. That's gonna be 24 and three eighths. 24, three eighths. So that's gonna be my middle point. And then I'm gonna find half of my middle point and half of 24 and 3 eighths. That's gonna be 12 and some smidges. Well, the battery died on the camera, did not realize it, but we're putting in the side pieces here, which we pilot hole these in. And what I did and like to do on this, the middle and top piece is gonna have four all together. The bottom's only gonna have three because it's gonna be on the ground. The reason why I like the middle and the top to have four is it makes it easier to hang lights like this. And I went ahead and found the center, and then I found the center again, and then it kind of left me on the side. That, that way I had the middle a little more open, in case I gotta get something big into the tank, I get more space to do so. But these are purely, I mean it helps keep the boards together, but structurally not as important. So I'm gonna use cheaper machine screws on them. Well, I just happen to have them. Pile the hole them in, get them going. And I did not drill all the way through, only went about halfway in. That way I don't have to clean debris. Make sure this is nice and flush because you don't want to put the top in later and it be wonking on the side of it and causing dips and humps in your aquarium. That would not be good. And that's done. Give it its signature T to know that that's the top in the top right corner for myself. I know where my flushed and plumbed areas are. And then time to build the other two squares. All right, I got the three squares, three shelves done. 
Now the trick with this is I have these nails in here holding down the footing. So I can't just bring the bottom part up and flush it up or anything. You can see two by four. It leaves a wide space. So I gotta fill in this spacing with something. So what I did, so I had some scrap here. I built up a mock-up and a two by four and one piece of plywood is just about right where I need to be. Like it's really close. And it's only one tank and I could shim the rest of this. So what I'm gonna, so what I'm gonna have to do is cut a two by four this length and then I will have to drill in the middle here, I'll show you. Oh, and yes, why I build this, I am still painting. All right, so now we've got to drill some holes here for these nails, which I'm just gonna hold this over here, and then hammer down on this. Give me a mark for where I need to drill. And then get you a spade bit. I got an inch here. It should be plenty big. And boom, we got holes. It should slide on, fit snug as a bug. All right, there we go. Noise. Get a couple two and a half exterior screws. Screw it in. All right, that's in. Plywood time. And same thing with that. Screw it in. All right, two by four and plywood's in. Make sure this is flat. Cleaned up, as always. Oh, buddy. And the screw did make a little hump here. When it does that, make sure that the screw's in a little bit. Smash her down. All right, I gotta take a moment from this project. This way I keep the paint rolling. I right, cut these. I'm gonna use these two by 12s for a fry rack here. So I'm gonna get these measured cut at 59. These are gonna be my shelves. And I had to set up a little space for these little guys since they're not going to fit on that spread. But I absolutely love to be able to walk past this tank. Them rice fish in there. Just gave them a little treat of some Daphne. Of course my phone starts ringing. Yum, 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 yum. And in between, you know, I gotta get them perks in. Alright, back to this. Let's get this cleaned up. I'm gonna go ahead and get our first square, our smaller square. It's gonna make up that difference. And this is where I got my teeth. So here you can see how this is gonna fit. It looks good. We just put our top across it and that'll become part of it. But before I put this in here, I'm gonna wanna put my legs on. I'm gonna have wanna build up because I can't reach that back there. Which is gonna be tricky because I actually have to indent the other ones inside of here, which you guys will see. I right, got four legs at 73 quarter. Beautiful. Pilot hold and prepared. Just like those front and back boards were. Good chunks off the back. Make sure that it's smooth for that tight fit as always. Now on this one you can see I got two different screws. So this one is a three inch. This one is a two and a half inch. And the reason why I've got, and I could have just used all two and a half inch, but the three inch will give me more power. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So I'll, I went ahead and drilled more towards the inside of where the two by four would be. That way I'm missing this screw, the screws down here with that. But that three inch, that three inch can go through here. If I had a three inch over here, it'd poke out. So that's why I'm using a two and a half. So level her up and screw her in. And this is a bit odd because usually screwing on the, whoa. It's a bit odd because usually we screw in the side and not on the front and back. Actually on these, I'm gonna use two and a half screws for each because I was gonna go on the end here. I think I'm gonna indent it some. That way I got some room to get back there a little easier. So it's gonna be kind of like a little cantilever rack. Of course on the bottom, definitely not gonna matter. But as we go up, cantilever, it's only about six inches. So I don't think that's gonna be an issue. If not, subscribe and you guys will find out if it works or not. Hopefully it does. All right, next step, I'm gonna measure 30 inch distance for the middle shelf. And got my chalk stick, made my mark, and put a two by four up, get about that much space. All right, got the legs started, got those on. That way we know where to drill it. Ready to do the next. Which I can use two and a half for the rest of them, since they're not going into the longer boards. Like this. We're gonna scoop this over. Now I could probably measure this out, but I wanna go ahead and fit it in. That way I know it's exactly where I need it on the face of it. 
explain this. So I called in the big guns to beat my hands here because we got to get it flush to this stud here. Here we go, a nice finished look. As you can see, it's indented in a little bit. I'll screw that in so she doesn't yell at me. So we're gonna get it near our marks, get our one screw in. Then where's the levels? In your pocket, your back pocket. Then we're gonna work our way around doing that and leveling it as we do. And of course, to get to the back ones, we're gonna have to move this out. And now that that's screwed in one at a time, and the reason why I do that is because I can get adjustability from it. But now that it's all screwed around, pinned in on each side, we can go through and finish her off. All right, getting there. Got the middle one in. Now we're gonna stick it back in and do it again. And of course, we put it back in, just pull it out again. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta get on this side. And of course we put it in, back to level it around like last time. And boom, there we have it. Cantilever rack for 55 gallons so we can have flush faced wall tank. And what's gonna be really cool is the fact that you're gonna look at this tank with just a little viewing window and then it's gonna go way down. So it's like one of those tanks you can just look into for a long way. It's gonna be sweet. And now to work our way down to the 75s. And to help with the integrity and success of this rack, I am gonna go ahead and pin it in to this pole here. Top and bottom. Ooh, damn. Did I hit the tank? You did. Oh, shit. I gotta focus with dexterity. All right, I gotta get, all right, now we can get the shelf in finally. Oh, get in there, hope it fits. Always ain't nothing worse than when you paint one of these things and it don't fit. Oh, yeah, it did. School one for the good guys. Yes, I think I'm a good guy. Mr. Good Guy. Boom! That'll work too, Mr. Nice Guy. Say, Lady Albinos. Well, I had to probably hammer that flush. Get this thing bang bang. Bang bang bang. Oh, ho, 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 yeah, boy. Superpower. Call me Thor. Ooh, getting exciting in here. Crazy thing is, that definitely is not straight over there. But this will make it look straighter down. Just this side's gonna be a little goofy because the barn looks like she's been blown. Just a little bit. Okay, maybe a lot. It's so beautiful. And after all that in and out, finally got it stuck in there. I think it's ready for the load. Thanks. All right, so we got a nice little mess here and we got the 55 gallon and the 20 gallon high multi-rack. If you guys haven't seen those videos, you can check those out on my channel, but time to move into the space with what we were painting, why we were building that. This is gonna be a fry rack system. So this is gonna be cool. This is gonna be a lot different than what you guys have seen on any of these builds so far. Some of you guys may have seen something like this in my old fish room, but we're doing it a little bit different. Just look at this, that's a two by 12. Some of you guys may be able to figure out, but if not, and if so, either way, stick around, check this out. So back to our old paper here, the fry rag. That groom, 59 inches long for the system. And then the rest of this is dumped. And if you ever wanted that in-wall tank, hopefully this video helped you. Stay tuned. There's going to be more. As you see, we haven't even put anything in the tanks yet. There's lots of content to come. So hit the subscribe button to stay tuned. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you all so much for the support. Peace. I'll see you on the next one.